Today is July 9th, 2014. It's 10 uh, a.m. Uh, I call the meeting of the Monagay County Commission to order. Would everyone please rise for a moment of silent meditation and pledge to the flag. Church General County Fund, $227,062.66. General County Fund Purchasing Card, $2,695.87. Cole Severance Fund, $68,018.75. Chestnut Ridge Park, $2,413.90. Mason Dixon Park, $176.33. Home Confinement Fund, $230. 911 Cash Fund, $1,232.04. A total of 301 Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Uh, Renetta. Reimbursement requests for the Governor's Community Participation Grant Program. Uh, the first, they're both actually for Cooper's Rock Foundation. Um, one is for $4,000. Uh, there's also a certificate of completion because they have fully expended their funds. Uh, and the other is for $3,000. That's for restoring the fireplaces up there? One is restoring for the fireplaces and the other is for uh, rebuilding and replicating the um, entrance, entrance way that they used to have. Okay. So moved. A second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Um, I also have a contract for the Governor's Community Participation Grant Program for the WVU Center for Excellence and Disabilities. The resolution uh, approving the contract was approved by the Commission on 4-16-14. Um, so we're just asking for the President's signature on the contract so that we can start spending the funds. Uh, so move that we that the authorize me to sign. sign. Yes. Uh, I second that. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Here comes our trick here. Kind of not going to work. One of those. Hmm. Well, I get a pen, but it rolls all the time. Okay. This one fell off someplace. I'm more than a third one. There's actually one of the one that you're signing now. Oh, is that right it? Right There's not a third one? Okay. There we go. Thank you, uh, thank you Renetta. Okay, correspondence, requisition for payment number six, Star City TIF. Okay, it's, it's contained in here, 2817.50. Move for approval. I uh, uh, second, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Okay, this is the signature page. Okay. <laughs> Star City, as always, is very thorough on, in the presentation of their uh, TIF and, and their paperwork and all, so I, I really appreciate that. So, Jim, will you pass that on back to the Star City? We really appreciate it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's easy to read and know exactly what we're doing. So. Okay, any other correspondence, Diane? I have one other 
the matter. <clears throat> it's not really correspondence, but um, I had a phone call earlier in the week. This is regarding a bond issue that the commission did back in 1985 for uh, selling bonds to construct a creek building in Sunrest. Oh, okay. Um, the bonds have been paid. So this, these are releases that Phil Becker has prepared for the commission to sign. There's a release of trust indenture, a release of deed of trust and security agreement, and a release of assignment of rents and leases. Do you need a motion to move that we move approve that uh, the acting president signs the forms? The release. Released. Uh, second, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. This was um, this a creek building out there and split at Collins Ferry where the WVU police used to be. And I guess before TIF legislation stuff, they had other ways, means by which uh, county governments could help uh, build certain public facilities. And we're just releasing that for anyone that might be interested. Probably not, but I thought I'd throw it out there anyway. <laughs> The sheriff has an employee to introduce. Okay, sheriff. Good to see you. Employees. Employees. They keep leaving. They keep getting. Them. Well, that's good. It would be bad if they left and you couldn't get anybody. Get yeah. <laughs> We're gonna be up to doing double duties. That's right. <laughs> We're actually fortunate this time. Um, we got lucky this time. We didn't, we didn't have to go uh, out of the house to find a couple people. What, uh, what we had, uh, we had one employee that has uh, left employment. He and his wife are moving. He's going back to school uh, out of state. So uh, he was a full-time employee. Uh, and the other employee uh, was uh, recently dismissed. Uh, so. The two people we'd like to introduce today to move from their part-time positions currently in process transport to full-time positions in court security are Joe Voighthofer and uh, he would and Valerie Walker, and they both would start at uh, $2,135 a month. We're looking at the effective date of July 16th, and. Uh, they would have a six-month probationary period, even though they've been employees for a while now in part-time status. And of course, both would be eligible for full benefits. I move that Joseph Voighthofer and Valerie Walker be hired full-time. Uh, second, I have a motion to the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Welcome aboard. Yeah. Glad to have you. you. You've been with us before, and you've obviously done a good job. We expect the same in your full-time position. Also, and I know you will. Yeah. <laughs> also, I can say I know. I will say Joey at, at Joey. From the school system, and also I worked with him at Rob's Fitness Factory, and I never was afraid when he was there. <laughs> but I'm glad, and he'd been trying, and I am really glad. You know, he'd been hoping to get on, and he's been working at it. So congratulations. I'm glad. And Valerie, congratulations, dear. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much, sir. Okay, any other uh, correspondence or how about unfinished business? Any unfinished business? No unfinished business. We've wrapped everything up. We could all go home. Right? Yeah, no. I wish. No, can go home. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll go to new business. Cole Severance budget revisions. Uh, go ahead and report. Uh, we've yeah. heard all across the state. I've heard attending the meetings with the West Virginia Association of Counties and the uh, County Commissioners Association. Everybody's been hit horribly with uh, cuts in coal severance, and we just got our bad news. So, you want to go ahead and report it? Well, for one thing, the checks that we normally get from the state for coal severance, being uh, based on production and population, those did not come in June. <laughs> We'll be getting them later, but um, Kelly just gave me a figure of the actual carryover balance for coal severance is three hundred eighty-one thousand twenty-nine dollars and sixty-six cents, and we had predicted carrying over five hundred thousand. So we are short. Um, the commission will have to decide where you want to make some cuts, how you want to come up with that difference. Um, since this is due in the auditor's office on the fifteenth of July, which is the day before our next meeting. I would suggest if you would approve a meeting in special session on Thursday afternoon at 3. Friday at 3. Friday at 3. We need 48 hours, right? Oh, okay. Friday at 3. 
Because you said you were working Friday. No, but in the afternoon I could work. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do Friday, Friday th yeah, three. July 11th. Uh, to look at the. Does that work for you? Budget. It's fine. Okay. okay. Uh, and get those revisions ready and approve them so we can get the auditor on time. Before I make the motion, I know that both of us have been very concerned. In fact, all three of us, Bill isn't here. Um, Mon County is now feeling the effects of the reduced funding amounts in the coal severance. We now must reconsider our funding amounts to all the organizations due to these drastic cuts. And I am concerned, as the others are, that this is just the beginning of dwindling funds and that we are starting to see the beginning of the future or the end of uh, these amounts. Um, since we were, are required by law, we are planning, and I will move in a little bit, that we have a meeting on uh, Friday at 3 o'clock, July 11th. I guess my biggest concern is that this is a wake-up call, not only for Mon County, but for all the agencies that we fund that it's starting to dry up and they may have to find other avenues and ways to come up with the funds because it will not be available through us. And hopefully we are planning during the work session after this meeting to come up with different options. And again, any option could be from anywhere up to a five to 10% cut in the agencies we were going to give funds to, to finding other funds where we may be able to do, make it through one more year and not have to do that. But I think we're gonna look at all the different options and I know uh, Eldon and I will do the best we can to cause as minimal impact as possible this year. But I think we're, 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 it's very clear that this may be the last year we could be funding at full amount. So I will move that we have a county commission meeting at three o'clock on Friday, July 11th. For, and with one item only, the coal severance. Revisions uh, on the budget. On the budget. On yes. the budget. No, we we'll be look, working on the budget. I'll, Correct. Uh, second that. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passed. And I don't know if you wanted to say something, but Eldon had been talking a couple weeks ago and mentioned when he went to the county, the state, that we're fortunate. We're at two hundred thousand. But I believe you said was it Marshall I County? Think it was Marshall County that lost two million in coal severance. Right. So I think this um, is a wake up. Yeah. I think Upshur County lost like eight hundred thousand mm -hmm. in coal severance. A couple other counties have lost in the millions in coal severance. Coal severance uh, are the is the primary funds by which we uh, use to fund outside agencies in various. Uh, that, that that's what we primarily use coal severance so when you when you start cutting coal severance and I'm not going to sit here and say who's to blame but but if you're not burning coal you're not going to have coal severance tax <laughs> so uh, the, the reality is is that as Tom just mentioned that that as a funding source appears to be gone away so agencies as well as the county need to to take stock of that and as he said start start now mm -hmm. looking for other possible funding sources because those coal severance funds that look like they're going to come back anytime soon i guess the other thing i'd like to say we have an election coming up and whether it's democrat or republican i am i am hoping that rather than looking for blame for either party, let's start coming up with solutions so we can move forward and the state can get out of this crisis. Thank you. Yes. Second for a special meeting. Did we vote? Did I, did I vote on it? Yes. Okay. Call me my Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, the next uh, thing on new business is August 6, 2014 meeting. That's the week of. Um, of the uh, County Commissioners Association annual meeting. Uh, it's uh, not only is the annual meeting, but it's the annual auditor's training for all county commissioners. And the uh, auditor's office uh, wants two full days. So that takes us into Wednesday. So uh, we, we need to, to cancel that meeting because it's in Huntington now and there's no way that 
-hmm. unless the sheriff is driving that we could get back. (laughs) (laughs) You need an official motion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Perry would get us here early. Oh, we'll get you there late. Oh, late. Oh, oh, late. No, Kelly will get us here early. Okay. Yeah. I move that we cancel the August 6, 2014 meeting. I uh, second that. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Well, I do have a question. Did we move the intergovernmental meeting? Okay, so it'll still be that evening. Okay, so we still have that. The intergovernmental meeting will still go on. That evening, okay. Yeah. Just I don't want anyone. We should be back by then. Oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'll come get you. (laughs) You'll come get it. Okay. Okay. Any other new business? All right. Reports from county commissioners. Um, a couple. One, one good report. Um, I've been attending the coordinating council on homeless, and finally we are putting together a catalog that we are going to hand out to not only the commission, city council, but also to police force and school systems. It's a catalog of basically programs and services offered by agencies serving persons experiencing homelessness. And a lot of times, a lot of people have questions and you think, well, we could send it to one place, but maybe they only work with people 18 or younger or 18 and older. So we're reporting in a catalog and we'll keep updating it and we're gonna get that to all the officials. So at least, you know, if someone calls, we have some options for you. Um, The second item, I, I just want to say that I I finished early this morning reading the book of The Pretty Little Killers, and there's a couple of things I do just want to say. First, I, I want to say thank you to the law for enforcement officials. I know a lot of us at times were a little bit angry or concerned that they didn't think we were moving. When you read the book, you realize what they were really doing and following the legal steps, and I do want to say thank you to all the parties law enforcement officials. I know at one time you'd you'd hear a lot of comments, but I'm very pleased in how they handled the situation. And the second thing I will just say is I strongly recommend the parents to read the the last chapter. And as a counselor for 36 years, I I, I think they give a really good ending to the book. And I just want to, it's called Red flags for parents to watch for and prompt actions to take. So it, it's really worth individuals looking and reading it and talking with their uh, students and their children. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. I really don't have anything. We've got a lot, got a lot of things coming up, uh, regional jail meetings, uh, leadership meetings, and, and all. I'm sure I'll have something after that. Uh, elected officials, Gene. I got um, an invitation or a request to come to the regional jail meeting. Okay. The 18th. I thought I would go. That'll and be good. Take Kathy with me. She does good. the criminal work. So I, well, was, I, I, I came I, up here to see if you needed me to look into anything or. Well, I, I was planning on going with you. I think I was going to go with the sheriff. The sheriff, you were going to go? The meeting's tomorrow. No, it's the 18th. No, it's the 18th. No, it's not the 18th. It's the uh, 14th. 17th. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. Bingo. It's uh, next, next Thursday. Yeah. I know it's Thursday. Well, okay. It's next Thursday. It's next Thursday. Next Thursday. I wrote it down this Thursday for some reason. Uh, that's how long it would take if Perry was driving. <laughs> you well, thought Perry was driving, so it would take you a week to get Perry there? Was, uh, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> were, were you gone, Sheriff? Yes. Can I ride with you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, so I guess there'll be four of us down there. There were, uh, there were uh, several counties that were really, really in debt. Oh, there, yes, there's there's um, uh, there's two counties that I know of that has do not have the money to pay the bill. Well, we cannot pay the bill. There's no money there to pay the bill. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, that's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting uh, this this meeting. Uh, I know. I know they built the regional, the legislature built the regional jails where they did for the purposes 
of economic development rather than uh, efficiency and economics. They, but the, rea the reality is, is they built them in such a fashion that some counties had huge jail bills and transportation bills they're never going mm -hmm. to be able to pay. Go ahead, Jim. Um, I, I think, and of course I've been here since the concept of the regional jail and I've listened to all the arguments, but I think the problem was when they built the regional jails, they totally discontinued their local jail mm -hmm. or a holding facility so that once they arrest someone, I know it was the practice here for a long time, that they arrest somebody and yeah, take them and charge them and off, off to Doddridge County. I know one boy that got arrested like five or six in the morning. He was in Doddridge County before daylight. I mean, what's the rush is what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. Why can't you keep them here, at least have an overnight holding facility or something? You know what I mean. Yeah, well, and I, I, they won't let them use having, the having served as a magistrate, uh, I, was, I was very attuned to that, as the sheriff can probably testify to, that, uh, you know, I would get calls on a regular basis, whether it's the city or the sheriff's department or, or the trooper, saying, I got someone, I know you're going to let him out, do we really need to transport him, will you come in? And I'd come in all hours of the night, any time, mm -hmm. even though we weren't required to. You're only required to come in at 10 in the morning and 10 at night. But I would come in at any time just because it was foolish for transport and then you have to do a video arraignment and you take that person down there and then a lot of times especially with the students you had a situation where they don't have any family here to go down and pick them up and when you release them down there to read your jail they just put them out on the road i know and some they have to find have their own any, way back some yeah. don't have any way home right and i i knew a couple people that that uh, that uh, came back and told me that they couldn't get their, their roommates and, and they ended up walking all the way to Clarksburg, which is like 50 miles or something like 40 miles, 30 miles or something like That's that. That's true. It really is. And I have heard of a couple of them who, who were just released. They started walking and were mugged before they got home. <laughs> It's not a good yeah. situation, no. and uh, I think they just did it t too much at one time. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They yep, just I agree. totally quit with the local facility. Would, do we have some options that we could provide if we go down there and be funded? Sheriff, is there anything at this time or not yet? One of the things we do, I mean, we don't take them down now within that two, three hour period right. unless somebody's getting out of hand and we just right. need to get rid of them. Um, I understand what Gene's saying about a holding facility. However, you can get a 24 or 48 hour uh, holding facility, uh, but the problem with that is you have to meet all of the Title 95 regulations. Mm -hmm. And when those came into play, that's why we shut down the jail because it was going to cost an exorbitant amount of money to bring the old jail into compliance for, with Title 95 regulations. So we couldn't do it. So for, uh, for us, uh, I, years ago, talked to George Trent, who's the administrator uh, at North Central Regional Jail, and said, look, you know, there are some times where we know we're going to have people that are actively trying to get bonded out. Right. If we have those people, what we'd like to do is keep them for a longer period of time. And he said, we don't have any problem with that if it's, you know, once in a while or you know somebody's getting bonded right. out. Where we get into a problem is if we keep them over a reasonable amount of time mm -hmm. because then they're going to start saying wait a minute right. you're acting as a holding facility right and we're not uh, classified as a holding facility mm -hmm. so that's why thank you rules and regulations absolutely yeah anything else gene no thank you uh sheriff you have anything uh just a couple things last week uh our assessor and i attended a uh, 
meeting in uh, Fairmont for the North Central West Virginia Community Action Association, and uh, there were probably 60 people there, mm -hmm. well, probably about 60 people there, and they're, they're looking at uh, their region, the North Central West Virginia region, to see what uh, needs are for uh, people in, in different counties, and there are representatives from a lot of different counties in this region. And basically what they're looking for are people that have certain needs, uh, you know, medication needs, uh, homelessness, uh, mental health needs, things like that. So they put this group of people together, which is a pretty eclectic group, uh, to find out what agencies they can uh, contact to see what the needs are that they're seeing coming into their agencies like the health department, the hospitals, the uh, 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 mental health facilities, things like that. So it, it seems like that was the very first meeting going to meet again in three months and uh, see where that first part has gone to. But the first meeting was basically to say, here's what we're looking at doing. We'd like to have your help. Can you give us names and addresses and contact people of agencies in your particular county that we should contact or we should get on board with us? So we did that. And uh, I think it was, it was a pretty fruitful meeting. <coughs> Who's leading that? That's the uh, North Central West Virginia Community Action Association. Mm -hmm. Is that a private nonprofit or is it's it? It's a nonprofit. Yes. Private nonprofit. That's good. Uh, the other thing, just uh, quickly, tomorrow we are having our uh, deputy sheriff century level test. Thanks to Carrie, um, I think we have nearly uh, or about 40 applicants. They'll be taking that test. We currently have two active open positions that we were trying to fill before, but uh, weren't able to with the, the list that we had. So uh, that testing will take place tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock, 1.30, and then uh, as soon as we get the test results back, then we'll start that process to fill those two positions. Okay. Perry or Kelly, you have anything to add? Thank you. No, sir. It says, sir. Uh, just a reminder that this Saturday starts our uh, satellites for the month of July, and we'll be at the... Uh, those are the whoos. So I like to get yes. <laughs> Those are the ones you're sending out. The, the UFO ones. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be at uh, the Orange Community Building, Clinton Library, and the Blacksville Social Hall. And those times will be 9 to 12. I, I uh, uh, must commend you on that. I, I, have, uh, I have got some comments. Mm -hmm. On, on uh, your efforts to be out there in the community like that and, and all, and, and uh, people are very thankful. So I, I want to pass that thanks on to you. Well, and and too, just to adhere to your uh, suggestion last week, uh, Chuck and I were out the other day, so we got the 15 different sites to pin up uh, the locations, the announcements. So we hit, I think, all the vets and all the groomers that we could that were open. So we had 15 <laughs> So they were appreciative of having that information. Yeah. They've actually had people come in asking them if they knew when the satellites were starting, mm -hmm. even though it's on their personal program form and people haven't seen it yet. So right. this is just another well, way People don't read their mail, but yeah, they'll have read something it on the wall. Right. Yeah. Just so, check Kroger's. They always look at Kroger. <laughs> so we're hoping that with the addition of the other sites that we've added for this year, since we're up to 10, that that will help in different areas of the county. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Carrie? Anything? Uh, Diane, anything further? Bobby? Renetta? Jamie, nice to have you back. The tires, is that? Yes, yeah, Saturday. One yeah, thing. I want to mention, you know, Good. Ben's sitting there. The tire day is Saturday from 8 to 3 behind Sam's Club. Right, one that, yes. And uh, we're taking 10 for license, a uh, small car, or small truck and cars, because they're all, we used to do 16 and a half, but now, you know, standard tire sometimes are 19 inch. So we just put a mm -hmm. small tire. We're taking them on and off the rim also. Yeah, you, they can bring them with the, yeah. with the rim. We have a rim buster in place. And, uh, Do you give them the rims back? or No, 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 no we keep them. We're keeping the rims. We, we <laughs> keep the rims. Yeah, we're recycling them ourselves this year. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So that's... Kind of commission recycling. So, so that, yeah. <laughs> so that's, um, that's... That's our next duty. So that's... <laughs> a, a, that's what any size tire other basically. than large truck tires yeah basically and i think if you talk to the gentleman from the dep uh we take those two on a 
on a different basis. We don't advertise that. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We've we also got some big tractor tires sometimes too, but we don't advertise that either. Right. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. I think you got got everyone. Uh, any comments from the public? Any public? <laughs> gone once. Gone twice. Okay. Move to adjourn. Uh, second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>